Good morning. Here's a little demo video that um, shows you some of the tricks that I use. First thing we're going to do is to import your Second Life capture. Uh, you can use either the thumbnail view, which is that view there, or you can use the uh, details view by right-clicking in that uh, clip bin area. Um, I use the details view so that you can see how big it is. It's a very large file. Drag it down to your timeline. And the first thing that I like to do is to chop that baby up. This thing is 53 seconds long, so about half of that would be uh, about 22, 23 seconds. So I put my cursor in the middle, and then I go up and hit split, and that splits uh, that clip in half. And then the second thing I do is right click and pull down to uh, remove from the storyline. So now I've got one of my clips there. And I go ahead and click on produce. Uh, since you're using CAM5, I believe, you definitely want to produce yours in WMV. Uh, otherwise, your CAM5 cannot pick up or read a, a movie file. So you go ahead and render it into your best quality WMV file, your Windows Media file. I'll go ahead and keep the largest video size. There's no point in bringing things down uh, at this point because whenever you do bring them down, that's when you lose quality. So I'll just keep the original uh, recording dimensions. Let's give this a name called uh, Demo Part 1. And then we'll go ahead and let this thing uh, render. Okay, the uh, file is rendering now. That is a CamRec file. In Camtasia, you can save your captures as a CamRec file, which is what that is, using the TechSmith codec. Or you can also select the option of saving them as an AVI file if you want to edit them in some other program. Only TechSmith Camtasia can read a CamTech file. Okay, this thing is almost finished rendering. And when it does, it's going to take us back to our Camtasia product, uh, project. Okay, so we have uh, rendered that. Now let's compare. Let's compare this part of the file to that capture file. Now, uh, this Windows Media file, here it is. I got it out of its, took it out of its folder, so we don't have to mess with folders. Now, this Windows Media file should. Uh, uh, should be uh, quite a bit less, and as you can see, the um, the CamRec file is 54 megabytes, and the Windows Media file is not half of 54 me megabytes. It's 775 kilobytes. It is seven times smaller, seven times smaller than the original. So uh, two of those. Uh, two uh, 775 kilobyte files does not add up to 54 gigabytes, I assure you. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, view it, see if it, uh, see if it rendered okay. And even a 775 kilobyte file, you can see Windows Media Player choking on it a little bit. I was, I was clicking play there and it was uh, having to digest it. Okay, so we'll go ahead and then expand it out, see if we like it. Uh, the normal eye would not see a lot of difference in quality between this Windows Media file here and the original CamRec file or the original AVI file. So uh, go ahead and dumb them down and believe me, you'll be glad you did. Okay, let's go back to the uh, project file. Okay, we have, we have uh, dumbed that one down. We're going to click Control-Z. That takes us back to where we were before our cut. Now let's take out part, that first part there, and that leaves us with the second part. We have not yet uh, dumbed down to Windows Media. So let's go ahead and dumb down the second part using our same settings. This will be our part two. And we will go ahead and render, render that. Let me uh, fast forward us through this render process a little bit. Okay, I fast forward us through the uh, rendering process. Again, uh, let's compare them. Let's uh, look at demo part one done in Windows Media, its size, and compare it to demo part two 
done in Windows Media, and I guarantee you adding those two files together will not add up to the same size of that original capture file. This is 706 kilobytes, and uh, so you've only got 1.4 megabytes compared to what you originally had, which was 56 uh, megabytes. So you've taken it down from 56 megabytes down to one megabyte. That's, that's huge. We go back here. Now we're just going to remove everything from a clip bin, everything from a timeline. And now we import our two window uh, media files. Demo part one. Bring that in. And then uh, import media demo part two. We put them down on the timeline. Again, you can look at them as thumbnails or details, whichever helps you. We put part one on the timeline. We part, put part two on the timeline. And if we run our playback over it, you will see nothing. You will see no difference in that split. It's as if that split does not exist. But you have reduced the size of that file by uh, a factor of 560. Now in terms of incorporating your, uh, your missing slide, now I don't have the original slides for that little show I was showing you, so what you do, you just uh, uh, export your slide as a JPEG. You already know how to do that. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to my original PowerPoint, exporting my slide as a JPEG to my desktop. saving it as a JPEG. I'm just going to do the one slide. Now I've got that a JPEG of that slide on my desktop. I go over to the callout function, click on callouts, add callout. Now I click on custom callouts and this custom callout allows me to click on new custom callout which will give me a browse window I go and select my slide that I want to import, Universal Healthcare for America, open it. Now it appears in my preview window right there and gives me the size of it. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it my replacement slide. And I click OK and it is now available to me in custom callouts. I go to the callout type window. and I pull down custom callouts are usually placed at the bottom and there it is replacement slide I click on replacement slide and it appears in my rendering window uh, I make a few adjustments if you're gonna do a kind of on top replacement you wanna keep aspect ratio whenever you adjust it take out drop shadow take out fade in fade out you want it to look like a PowerPoint slide, make sure your alpha channel, your opacity is 100%, click OK. Now there's that slide. Now what I'm going to do is to uh, bring that slide down to where it looks like it belongs on that player. So I just modify it and I just nudge it on down. It takes a little bit of back and forth till you get it to where uh, nobody can tell that it was not originally a part of that slide viewer right there. Almost there. Almost there. One more little adjustment ought to do it there. Okay, see how it sits on top of that slide viewer there? And you can't... Oh, no. Excuse me. One more. <laughs> okay, there you go. Now, once I click off of it, and I get rid of the border, see how it looks it sits exactly on top of that slide viewer and you can never tell that that slide was not a part of the original recording okay uh, there you go I hope those little tricks uh, help you and uh, help you keep a little more hair in your head than I have kept in mine because I have uh, certainly pulled a lot out talk to you guys later